always catches me out. Um, he's going to be talking about the centenary of uh, Georgi Lukács' history uh, and class consciousness. Um, this is a, a very influential book. I think many people on the left have been influenced by it. It's still, I think, uh, quite widely debated. And um, so Mike is going to uh, revisit, I think, some of those debates, but uh, should be an interesting discussion. And um, if anything else, it will make us consider some of the views on, on this book and its significance, I'm sure. OK, Mike, off you go. OK, well, I'll, I, I hope it's uh, of some use. Um, I should start, I guess, um, by saying um, uh, that I spoke on uh, this issue uh, at less substantially less length at the uh, Platypus Convention in Chicago uh, at the uh, end of March, beginning of April. Um, and this is going to be based on what I said there. I should add, I guess, uh, in the first place, that there's some really useful articles on Lukacs by comrade Lawrence Parker, um, both on uh, uh, Cosmonaut in January and uh, in the weekly work a few weeks ago. I find I printed it off without putting the date on it. Um, I've also written um, on uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, some of the related stuff uh, in 2003, an article called Hegelian Pitfalls. Um, Um, uh, another, which was a review of uh, John Rees, um, an article called uh, from 2008 called Against Philosopher Kings, uh, an article from 2013 uh, called Lukács, quote, The Philosophy Trap. Um, <laughs> I should say that uh, Lukács, there's, there's two major directions in which the use of Lukács is taken um, by the left, one of which is uh, by the Trotskyist left to justify what's very broadly a uh, Bakuninist uh, political perspective in which strike, strike, essentially strikes are central and uh, 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 the development of strikes into the generalized mass strike perspective, probably partially falsely, but certainly not completely falsely attributed to Rosa Luxemburg and partially and not completely falsely attributed to Lukács. Um, on the other hand, uh, there, there is an enormously wide uh, section of the left, particularly the academic left, for which uh, History and Class Consciousness, the book, is a starting point for, for um, the uh, uh, Frankfurt School uh, and uh, for um, the narrative, which is extraordinarily widespread on the new left, that Engels vulgarised Marx. It's not original in uh, Lukács. It's already there in Harvest. Uh, in his arguments justifying support for the German war effort in 1914, among other places. Uh, but uh, that line of approach takes us into uh, a whole new world of the dominance of ideology and the dominant ideology thesis and, quote, Western Marxism and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. OK, so. I, I'm, I'm going to talk, I think, mainly, I'm talking mainly, I think, about the politics of history and class consciousness and of some of Lukács' uh, related writings, and uh, to a lesser extent about uh, how the philosophy uh, bears to some, perhaps, to a certain extent on the politics. So we start with Lukács. Um, he was uh, born in 1885 uh, at university in 1905-6. He was a Sorelian, that is, a, a, an advocate of um, uh, uh, revolutionary syndicalism, in which he was influenced by 
uh, Ervin Shabo. Um, I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation. Ervin Shabo, who was a um, socialist and later revolutionary syndicalist uh, who died in 1918. Um, and uh, Chavo, like uh, Georges Sorel, who he was influenced by, and similarly like uh, Arturo Labriola in Italy, um, and uh, uh, Karl Korsch later is a bit younger, but um, uh, uh, and uh, various other people who basically considered that the Bernstein's critique of uh, Kautsky and Marxism was broadly correct uh, that uh, the uh, essential shift was a shift in the consciousness of the working class, which could only take place in the form of mass action, uh, and hence the syndicalist perspective, as opposed to the partyist perspective, uh, which uh, these uh, authors argued was uh, scientific and um, uh, it, it led to uh, automatism and uh, gradualism. After his uh, undergraduate years, uh, Lukács in fact went to Heidelberg uh, and became heavily influenced by Max Weber and uh, Georg Simmel and uh, other neo-Kantian authors uh, of the same period. He wrote on aesthetic, a number of aesthetic matters, um, and he was still very much an anti-Bolshevik in 1917-18, uh, but uh, jumped really unexpectedly to people who had read his work to the Hungarian Communist Party in December 1918, in the immediate context of the Hungarian Revolution jumped in both feet, uh, feet first, and uh, served as uh, um, uh, uh, Commissar for Education in the Hungarian Soviet government of uh, 1918, um, and um, uh, as a uh, Commissar with the uh, Hungarian Red Army, uh, and after the revolution was defeated, did uh, clandestine work for a while uh, before he finally had to fly, flee to Vienna in uh, 1919. Uh, in 1919 uh, to uh, 1921 or 22, approximately, it's difficult to tell, certainly 1920, 1919 to 20, uh, Lukács was working with uh, the collective which produced the journal uh, Communist, uh, which was a uh, uh, with Ruth, Ruth Fisher, notoriously uh, one of the leaders of the left wing of the uh, German Communist Party and uh, other lefts of one sort and another. And in that capacity, he's one of the individuals targeted by name uh, in uh, Lenin's uh, pamphlet, Left Wing Communism and Infantile Disorder. History and Class Consciousness uh, is a book which was published sometime in spring 1923. Uh, Lukács' date on the preface, which is the point at which the uh, text went off to the printer, is, uh, is dated Christmas 1922, so that he was writing this exactly contemporaneously with uh, the Fourth Congress of the Communist International and can't have taken into account anything in the Fourth Congress of the Communist International. Uh, the bulk of the uh, chapters in uh, History and Class Consciousness are separately dated. Um, what is Orthodox Marxism in March 1919? Uh, the Marxism of Rosa Luxemburg in January 1921. And a chapter just called Class Consciousness in March 1920. Reification of the Consciousness of the Proletariat, which is the biggie, uh, is undated, but probably falls to be date, therefore to be dated in uh, autumn uh, 1922. Um, the Changing Function of Historical Materialism is June 1919. 
an article on legality and illegality, July 1920. Uh, Critical observations on Rosa Luxemburg's pamphlet, The Russian Revolution, January 1922, and uh, towards a methodology of the problem of organization, September 1922. Okay, so it's, uh, this is 1922, um, uh, uh, De December 1922 is, is the latest date of this stuff. Uh, the extent to which the individual chapters have been revised in autumn 1922 is variable. Uh, some of them we have the uh, equivalent text in the collection called uh, Tactics and Ethics, Political Writings, 1919 to 1929. Um, uh, and... Um, <clears throat> But certainly it's 1922 and uh, not 1923, but 1923 is when it's published. And the first hostile review of it is dated late May 1923. So it, it must have come out early in uh, 1923. Uh, the book is transitional between um, The uh, ultra leftism um, of uh, the Hungarian Revolution and uh, Lukács' also support for the March action against its uh, uh, March 1921 against its critics, and to some extent response to Lenin's left wing communism published in 1920, um, and that that's relevant in the parts which were written after the March action. Uh, <laughs> the context of its appearance of its publication is unfortunate for Lukács in two ways. Uh, the first of which is that uh, Korsh uh, continued to maintain the theory of Karl Korsh uh, in his Marxism philosophy, continued to maintain uh, the theory of the offensive, which was uh, essential, central to the idea of the March action, that the Communist Party has to take the offensive, be one step ahead, be steps ahead of the uh, uh, working class. Um, and the second is that uh, it came out, how shall I put it, between the fourth and the fifth congresses of the Comintern, Lenin died and there was a struggle for power. And in connection with that struggle for power, the conduct of uh, the KPD in autumn 1923 was uh, sharply criticized by Trotsky in Lessons of October, in October 1924. So that uh, Lukács's history and class consciousness came into existence in 1923-24, had the appearance, be because of the inconsistencies of the text, uh, and the fact that quite a lot of it is dated earlier, had the appearance of being an intervention uh, which could be seen as being on Trotsky's side of the debate over Lessons of October. Yeah. And um, as critical, therefore, of the uh, political line which had been adopted, uh, it's a complicated story because the reality is that Karl Radek as the uh, the adventurism of the March action was actually an adventure proposed by the Comintern leadership, which they uh, avoided talking about. Then the result of the disaster of the March action uh, was the uh, uh, a more cautious leadership around Thalheimer developed in the German Communist Party, and then Trotsky's criticism of uh, the Troika of Stalin, Zinoviev, Kamenev in their leadership of the Comintern can be read as being that the, Comint that the Communist Party needed to be more aggressive, take a more aggressive lead uh, in the uh, crisis of uh, autumn 1923. And in that context, history and class consciousness, although it isn't in fact, if it's 
it isn't in fact an intervention on Trotsky's side of the debate, could be read as being an intervention on Trotsky's side of the debate. And in the same way, Cauchy's uh, Marxism and philosophy could be read as being an intervention on Trotsky's side of the debate. Uh, although what in both cases is involved is trying to hold on to elements of what the old communist uh, trend uh, had uh, been uh, uh, arguing. 1925, uh, Lukács wrote um, Taylorism and the Dialectic, uh, which has been has stayed stayed in manuscript for ages and was then subsequently published by. Well, in published in Budapest in 1996 and then uh, in translation by Verso in 2000 with an introduction by John Rees. Um, Comrade Parker argues that Taylorism and the dialectic is not a defense of uh, history and class consciousness, and it's certainly um, true that it's uh, not exactly, and that Lukács disavows being a defense of history and class consciousness, but in a sense it's uh, very clear that it's a um, uh, 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 it's still um, a, along the lines of uh, combating uh, Taylorism in the sense of combating the failure to take revolutionary uh, initiatives. It's also extraordinarily um, deeply, deeply factional uh, document um, that it's it's about uh, factional the factional combat within the uh, Hungarian uh, Communist Party. It's generally accepted that Lukács later became a uh, quote Stalinist, meaning that he was uh, for practical purposes a supporter of the uh, uh, majority of uh, the of the Comintern leadership. Um, it seems to me that. Uh, uh, this is actually uh, not anything special that Lukács, I don't think Lukács was trying to be oppositional when he wrote uh, History and Class Consciousness. He was trying to adapt. And this is a phenomenon which actually is displayed throughout Lukács's political activity in the 1920s, um, that he's late. Uh, that he, uh, he he he's in in the, um, the communist period is defending uh, a, a a revolution now absolute present the absolute present possibilities of the revolution which is actually characteristic of uh, the first and second congresses of the you know, communist internet of the line of the first and second congresses of the communist international. Um, uh, uh, le history, history and class consciousness tries to shift ground without conceding to uh, the um, uh, uh, right wing um, who had argued that uh, revolution was unrealistic, revolution wasn't on the agenda, but at the same time also to shift ground towards uh, Lenin's arguments in left-wing communism. And in particular, actually, uh, the book is characterized, among other things, by um, some following of stuff which Lenin says in left-wing communism, which is just bollocks. Uh, so the general theory of uh, Lukács offers a general theory of uh, organization um, towards a methodology of the problem of organization in September 1922, uh, which um, rests on the supposition that Lenin is uh, 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 correct when he characterizes the um, uh, Bolshevik Party is steeled by its independent existence ever since 1903, which is fairly clearly just false that the Bolsheviks and Mensheviks were factions in the Russian Social Democratic and Labour Social Democratic Labour Party at least until 1912, and in parts of the country way beyond 1912. Um, uh, Taylorism. 
1928, um, in, sorry, in uh, jumping slightly, um, at this period, uh, the uh, leadership of the Comintern uh, was, as I said, around uh, uh, Stalin, the Troika, Stalin, uh, um, Reich, Kamenev, and Zinoviev, and uh, the the Troika uh, was arguing for, uh, on the whole, for a, uh, a, a, a not exactly a policy of aggression, but a policy of initiatives. Um, but uh, in 1925, uh, Stalin broke with uh, Zinoviev and Kamenev. Uh, Zinoviev and Kamenev went into opposition. Uh, the apparatus of the party was deployed against them. There was successively a, a, a Leningrad opposition alongside the Trotskyist Moscow opposition and then a united opposition. Um, and um, Stalin went into coalition with uh, Bukharin and Rykov um, on a, a line of uh, gradualism, which was also associated with social, the line of socialism in a single country. And this line of gradualism, socialism in a single country, and the smichka, the alliance between the proletariat and the peasantry, uh, the line of enrich yourselves direct, directed to uh, the peasantry. So this a, a line of alliance between the proletariat and peasantry. Uh, in uh, <clears throat> January 1928, um, Erno Yeno Landler, Landler, who was the leader of uh, uh, um, Lukács' faction in the uh, emigre uh, Russian, in the emigre Hungarian Communist Party, died, and the result was that uh, Lukács was um, commissioned to write uh, theses, perspectives theses. Um, which uh, he wrote, uh, which sometime in autumn 1928, and these are known as the Bloom Theses, uh, they are adapted to the political line of uh, the Sixth Congress of the Comintern, which was uh, led by Bukharin, who was still at that time in uh, the majority. However, at the right exactly the same time, uh, Bukharin and uh, Rykov fell into disagreement with Stalin about the question of uh, more aggressive exploitation of the peasantry, uh, promotion of collectivization and uh, crash industrialization program, where Stalin, in this case, made a zigzag. Essentially, at this by this stage, the Trotskyists and the Zinoviev, Kamenev, Leningrad opposition had been expelled from the party. And uh, Stalin proceeded to steal a version of their clothes and embark on the um, collectivization project. Uh, and this was um, at the expense of a break with uh, Bukharin. And uh, in April, in July 1928, Bukharin and Rykov fell into conflict with Stalin over collectivization. In April 1929, Bukharin was sacked as editor of Pravda. Stalin denounced the uh, right deviation in the party. And um, uh, going along with that, um, the uh, 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 Comintern through its uh, support, Comintern leadership through its support behind uh, Bela Kun's faction in the Hungarian Communist Party and uh, Lukács' Bloom Theses, which are not, they're not an oppositional document, they're not premature popular frontism, uh, they're simply an application of the line of the Sixth Congress of Comintern, but Lukács is caught short by uh, the um, uh, uh, <clears throat> turn in Moscow, uh, which he isn't up to speed with because he's actually not in Moscow at this time. And uh, so he has to, he's forced in 1933 uh, to uh, recant, um, it, to, to, to recant the Bloom Theses. He'd already recanted uh, substantial parts of uh, history and class consciousness. 
um, at this stage. Okay, so history and class consciousness, then it has a, a, a history in the 1920s, uh, which is a history of uh, Lukács' attempts to catch up with being on side with the Soviet leadership and uh, attempts to do uh, grand theoretical justifications uh, for particular factional uh, positions in relation to um, uh, 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 Russian and Hungarian and Europe German politics of uh, of of the 1920s. Mm. Now the history of its subsequent reception of the book uh, is complicated. We start with. Um, <clears throat> Uh, the uh, uh, the German reception, which is uh, that it leads into what becomes the Frankfurt School. It influences. Uh, it's it's supported by Korsch. Korsch continues to defend uh, history and class consciousness after his break with the at uh, the main line of history and class consciousness after his break with the international communist movement. Um, <clears throat> he. Uh, uh, but it also influences uh, uh, Horkheimer, Adorno, the guys who founded the Frankfurt Institute for Social Research. Uh, it's engaged with uh, by um, Heidegger, or at least uh, it's certainly believed to be the case that Heidegger engaged in a coded engagement with uh, uh, Lukács and oh god i can't remember the guy's name uh, the author of ideology and utopia in 1929 uses lukacs as an argument for uh, uh, lukacs's arguments as an argument for rejecting marxism as being uh, uh, merely an ideology merely a form of false consciousness karl mannheim that's correct um and um uh so that uh, it, in the, at this level, this this aspect of history and class consciousness, um, the arguments are being used uh, for a different purpose, which is to explain the failure of the working class to take power in Germany. Mm. Um, that's not precisely the purpose of the. Um, uh, 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 of of Lukacs's uh, original purpose, but it's uh, it's 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 certainly there. It's a, not it's a legitimate reading of the essay on uh, particularly of uh, the essay on um, uh, uh, reification and the consciousness of the proletariat and the more general essay on class consciousness. Nonetheless, uh, Lukacs isn't allowing the book to be republished. It's then picked up. Um, in France by Maurice Merleau-Ponty uh, in his book Adventures of the Dialectic. Uh, Merleau-Ponty uh, constructs, uh, in my opinion, an amalgam, uh, quote, Western Marxism, unquote, uh, the purpose of which uh, is to um, uh, argue that uh, Sartre is too close to uh, Sartre is too close to um, the uh, <clears throat> uh, French Communist Party, um, and that a, a Western Marxist approach is uh, to, to be preferred. The West, Western Marxism then forms its its uh, we we glue together as it comes to be the case. We glue together um, uh, Lukács with uh, Korsch with. Um, the the uh, Gramsci read Gramsci of the prison notebooks, not the Gramsci of Lordine Nuovo, uh, and so on and so on. Um, arising uh, from this background, and I think not wholly disconnected from it, Michael Harrington translated uh, chapter one of History and Class Consciousness. That's the text, um, What is Orthodox Marxism? 
1959, Michael Harrington, uh, at that stage uh, in the uh, Shackmanite, um, I cannot remember what the hell it was called at that time, perhaps the International Socialist League, perhaps the Yipsels, the Young People's Socialist League, um, uh, later founder of the uh, Democratic Socialists, Mar Democratic Socialist Organising Committee, which is the root of DSA. Uh, so Harrington translates, uh, quote, what is orthodox Marxism into English. Uh, and then uh, the whole book is translated. Uh, Lukács authorizes a reissue in German in uh, 1967, in which he writes a long critical preface uh, to the book, uh, in which he recants uh, important aspects of the book, but uh, not others. Um, <clears throat> and um, uh, that is then translated into English in 1971. And the translation into English in 1971 is the, uh, in essence, the basis of the uh, uh, influence on the Socialist, British Socialist Workers' Party and others, though it's also the case that Michael Lurvie's um, uh, book, um, which was in French called On Sociology of Intellectuals and Revolution in English is called uh, The Young Lukács from Romanticism to Bolshevism. Um, where's this coming from? In my opinion, in my opinion, uh, where this is coming from uh, is uh, partly Lukács's participation as uh, 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 junior minister in the Naj government in Hungary in 1956, with the result that he then has to go into exile again and be let back in from exile afterwards. So that uh, Lukács now appears as an oppositionist, in spite of the fact that he's been a uh, vigorous official communist, pro-Stalinist polemicist, and indeed in the preface to HCC, uh, the 1967 edition of HCC, he says, I was never a Trotskyist, he says, uh, 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 I agreed with Stalin on the question of socialism in one country, uh, and indeed, actually, uh, as of 1967, or indeed 1971, it must have been plausible, was clearly plausible to the vast majority overwhelming majority of the uh, existing socialist movement that uh, socialist construction in a single country was possible and that the Soviet Union was an example of socialist construction in a single country and so on. But Lukács has to be read in that sense. The point being not that he constructs an independent line of argument, which he, uh, an independent line of march, an independent political line, for the movement, he doesn't. It's that he has theoretical explanations which are on offer. Um, he's, but he appears as an oppositionist because we staple together uh, history and class consciousness, read as being a work of the early Comintern, a work of the classical Marxism of the early Comintern, uh, with uh, Lukacs's role in the uh, Naj government in uh, 1956. Uh, and identify Lukács as a critic of Stalinism. Something very similar was done uh, to um, Evgeny Pashukhanis by uh, leftists in the 1970s. Pashukhanis, uh, uh, Trotsky actually tells us, was a, was a Stalinist, in, literally in the literal meant. He was a part of the centre tendency around Stalin, uh, not a, neither a, a part of the right, which Lukács Perhaps we can say Lukács didn't honestly recant in 1933 and was still uh, really a Bukharanite. Uh, that's not impossible, um, but uh, he certainly wasn't a Trotskyist. And um, uh, he, he, as I say, he defends uh, official communism. We shouldn't say that that means, uh, Comrade Parker correctly says, we shouldn't say that that means that Lukács' work while he was an official communist is to be ignored because it's really important historical work and uh, for that matter, philosophical work done by people who were in fact official communists, which we have to read and take seriously and 
uh, so on and so on. Why, though, with he's being read as an oppositionist? Um, but it's also being read as an additional argument uh, in the terms of the politics of the new left. And the, the problem in essence is that the new left, which emerges after 1956, emerges into a world uh, in which um, uh, the People's Front, National Roads and the party monolith all appear to be categorically proved by the course of events between 1941 and uh, 1949. Mm -hmm. So that uh, leftists are repulsed by the crushing of the Hungarian uprising and uh, the character of the political regime in uh, the East, and they're repulsed in a different way by the gradualism, the British Road to Socialism, and the equivalent documents like the British Road to Socialism of the French Communist Party, the Italian Communist Party, blah, 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 blah. Um, uh, they think it's non-revolutionary. It's, in a sense, the same symptom as the guys uh, in the uh, YCL um uh, wanting to celebrate Stalin, or indeed the Maoists of the 1960s and 70s, wanting to celebrate Stalin as a way of combating the revisionism and gradualism and scientism of Khrushchev and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But to do so without falling into, quote, Trotskyism, because to fall into, quote, Trotskyism would be to reject uh, the People's Front, National Roads and the Party Monolith, and that's all disproved by the course of events between 1941 and uh, 1949. And so we pick up, we get, on the one hand, we get Maoism, on the other hand, we get uh, picking up Lukács, and we can pick up Lukács and use him as a foundation for a Frankfurt School uh, approach to politics, which is... Uh, aestheticist and um, very much third campist and um, or indeed first campist that it's uh, the defense of, civ of, of civilization uh, against Stalinism as well as against Nazism etc 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 or we can pick up Lukács and use him for, uh, to read as it were to read his HCC uh, for a um, radical centralism, which we get by reading uh, what is to be done in a vulgarized way and reading it together with the false narrative of the history of Bolshevism in left-wing communism. Um, and we can do that because the stuff is all in here. Yeah. Um, <coughs> we can construct in that sense a uh, theoretical foundation um, for uh, and uh, the uh, British socialist workers, the Cliffites, who used to be called the Socialist Review Group, were already characterizing themselves as a Luxembourgist group uh, before HCC was published. And of course, chapter two of um, HCC is the Marxism of Rosa Luxembourg. Um, and the preface characterizes Luxembourg as the only person who's made creative advance, or the only one of Marx's disciples who's made a creative advance on Marx. Um, Rosa Luxembourg, alone among Marx's disciples, has made a, a, made a real advance on his life's work. Um, so that, that that appropriation by uh, the British Socialist Workers' Party, uh, which then, of course, becomes, it's quite an interesting question. I'm not going to go into it, but it's an interesting question how it comes to be the case that actually the British, the the, the uh, international socialist tendency becomes for a while one of the larger far left uh, international tendencies. But that spreads this particular variant of Lukácsianism uh, far and wide. Um,
so that what we have is a combination of mass actionism, the sort of uh, the idea that uh, the party has to be one step ahead or more two steps ahead of the masses and to take the initiative, uh, the argument that the fundamental sin of the Second International took place in 1910, 11, 12, around the Prussian suffrage question and the failure to march on to the uh, uh, general strike for Prussian suffrage, which, uh, in my opinion, the upshot of that would have been a uh, march action. That is to say that the um, minority, that the, the, the socialist minority seeking to have a general strike around the Prussian suffrage question would have been crushed. Um, that was actually the opinion of Lenin and Trotsky at the time that this was a, a, an adventurist, uh, an adventurous policy. However, that plus the 1921 model party of a new type um, I'm going to say I, I'm going to say very little about the uh, substantive philosophical content of uh, history and class consciousness, but I'm going to say a little bit about it. And um, some of it is stuff which Lukács himself says in the preface that in uh, Mein Weg zum Marxismus in 1933, which I don't think has been translated, though I may be wrong on that. Uh, but also in the 1967 preface, um, he uh, <clears throat> he makes the point in the 1967 preface uh, that um, he overstated the relative the, the the significance of grasping the totality as such. Uh, he thought it was correct to reject uh, quote mechanistic fatalism but at the same time uh, makes the point that uh, intervention into the material world that the that praxis is intervention into the material world not simply intervention into the social world um, and praxis in this context depends on a correct reflection of reality that is to say if I don't look where I'm going I'm going to walk into a lamppost or a tree or something like that uh, but equally, if I want to um, uh, hit a speedo into a car, I have to actually see that I've got the right uh, screw and the right spot and all of that. So all of these sorts of questions. Mm. Um, I think this is, however, a more fundamental question than Lukács makes of it, because the problem is that the idea that dialectical reasoning involves essentially the grasp of the totality uh, carries with it the question how do you grasp the totality and the answer of course actually in uh, the methodology of the question of organization is this only possible to grasp the totality through uh, the collective action of an organization indeed uh, for Lukács, the proletariat can only be class conscious through the party. But then the consequence is that he make clearly has fully internalized the notorious uh, idea that you cannot be wrong right against the party, which is a common idea of uh, the capitulators, the people who, who, who went over from opposition to uh, uh, Stalinism and of... Uh, the uh, um, people who lay in a, at the end of the day lay down to be massacred um, and didn't fight back um, because you can't be wrong because you can't be right against the party um, in 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 the 1930s. Lukács is part of that, and his he's part of that precisely because actually his claims about method. Uh, inherently making part of that. Secondly, um, <clears throat> Lukács half breaks uh, from the proposition that uh, the physical sciences and the social sciences are so radically separate that uh, we can't uh, consider the problem with this. Um, and that, uh, it, but he doesn't break completely. And equally, he doesn't break with the idea that uh, 
uh, the dialectic is something which is really only applicable to capitalism. He doesn't break with his insistence on a radical, that to be historical is to insist on radical discontinuity and the determination by the totality of uh, the present. Uh, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, that also carries with it uh, the impossibility of um, actually making a, uh, a, a, a grasp of the historical dynamics, which will allow you to make concrete, real, serious proposals for action. Um, and it's the it's 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 be, part, partly because of the things which he objects to in quote second international Marxism uh, that Lukacs is unable to uh, <clears throat> fight a a corner any corner uh, with any degree of persistence against uh, the uh, the party leadership. Um, Finally, what is orthodox Marxism starts with the proposition that orthodox Marxism is a question of method only, and the critics of Marxism could have disproved the labor theory of value, could have disproved historical materialism, could have disproved the idea of uh, uh, the tendency of the working class to fight for its interests through collective action, and yet there could still be valid Marxism because only the dialectic and only the dialectic as the sense of grasping the totality, not the dialectic in the sense of grasping. Hello? Did we just all get muted? Yes, Mike, okay, sorry. We all got muted, yeah. Where did we lose me? About a minute ago, Mike. That's not terribly helpful. Uh, what was the last thing you heard? I'm, I've been trying, to, uh, you were talking about the, the issue of the totality. Okay, um, so the, <clears throat> the argument of uh, what is orthodox Marxism, it's only this method of grasping the totality but also this method of grasping the totality as one which is self-reflexive and being self-reflexive uh, implies that there can be no dialectic before capitalism. Um, that, it, that, that, that it's a method of understanding the present. Uh, actually, by uh, not being, in this respect, this was already a criticism which was made by Ernst Bloch at the time, that Lukacs', Lukacs interpretation of the dialectic as emerging out of uh, the present, of uh, the, the interaction of subject and object in the present, uh, Lukacs' interpretation entails a failure to grasp the character of Marxism as grasping process. Yeah. And uh, Lukacs sort of half, half uh, uh, self-criticizes uh, on that question. And uh, <clears throat> in 1967, actually, he still wants to hold on to um, the uh, stuff which he argued in uh, the mid 1920s in the reviews of Bukharin and Bitfogel, which are uh, reviews which are hostile to the idea of the uh, fundamental role of the productive forces in the development of society, development of productive forces in the development of society. Oh. Sorry? Sorry. Well, why is he talking about consciousness? Yeah. Um, and uh, <clears throat> uh, similarly on uh, uh, La Salle and uh, Moses Hess, his writings on La Salle and Moses Hess again in the mid 1920s, he characterizes, I think, correctly what he was writing at that time as too Hegelian. Um, and argues uh, that uh, he overcame it as a result of the uh, reading the economic and philosophical manuscripts of Mar Marx's economic and philosophical manuscripts. So um, back to summing up, because I'm using up too much time and I may seem to have been rambling. Um, Lukacs is correct to characterize this book as a part Marxist book. It's got large parts in it which uh, of argumentation which are purely neo-Kantian. 
and um, several um, uh, uh, recent authors have argued precisely that this is uh, that the, 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 the structural argument of this is taken from the Heidelberg neo stru stru philosophical grounds of the stuff are taken from the Heidelberg neo Kantians. There's a load of stuff which is Weber. The uh, <clears throat> what is orthodox Marxism is a closure against adverse evidence. It takes on what what should we do on the supposition uh, that Weber that that the marginalists did disprove Marx, that the historical materialism was disproved, but etc. 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 Nonetheless, we can still be Marxists. Um, and uh, Lukacs in 1967 still clings to uh, that conception. Um, and the Frankfurt School guys uh, still cling to uh, that conception. So it's a mixed book, which is part Marxist, part um, non-Marxist, which is part um, a, a book of Lukacs' ultra left phase, part a schematic uh reception of uh, the lenin of uh uh, uh left-wing communism and uh the second and third congresses of Comintern, um which has then been received and uh, reinvested with significance on the one hand by the uh, frankfurt school and uh, merlo ponti arguing for the category of quote western marxism as a way of um fleeing from Soviet defences. Um, on the other hand, as uh, by uh, the British SWP and other uh, authors who've used uh, HCC in the same way as a justification for um, uh, mass strikes conception of politics together with um, uh, bureaucratic centralism in party organisation. Um, and for that reason, I don't think it's I, I'm not saying don't read this book, but I think it's uh, certainly a mistake to treat uh, Lukács' uh, philosophical arguments as uh, foundational for a, um, a, a, a future Marxism. That's it. OK, thanks, Mike. Uh, apologies for any interruptions and technical problems there. I think we've resolved those. Uh, could I ask if any comrades would like to ask?